So I wanted to, I wanted to ask you though, the uh, the name, the Rumper Room, for the people that's that's viewing that may not know, how did that originate and where did that come from? We got the rump. We used to be, like I said, when I moved to Vallejo, we used to hang on Leonard Street in front of EB House mm. next door. Well, next door, really, to EB House. And out there hustling and grinding. My partner, Jamie 08, rest in peace, he used to see us all the time. And, and they had a show called the Rump Room Crew. Rump Room and Friends, I mean. And so, you know, at the end, Miss Nancy, she used to always take her uh, magnifying glass and be like, oh, I see all the kids' names. You know, Johnny, I see Sarah, I see whoop de whoop. And so he used to do that to us every day, fucking with us, like joking across the street. Look at them niggas over there getting money, little kid niggas, romp room niggas. I see Coolio, I see Dre, I see EB, I see Ray Ray. So he's saying our name, like he looking through a little magnifying glass. We like, fuck you, nigga. Like, you know, like, <laughs> he, well, he, shoot, he, he shoot jokes on us. It's a joke, you feel me? And we like, right, right. Room. So we went and got some shirts made. They said romper room on them, but we had the romper room crossed out. You know how you get the, like, the no smoking sign? So we got that mm -hmm. romper room crossed out, and we got LSF on the sleeve, like Leonard Street family. Like, nigga, we Leonard Street family. Nigga, 136 boys. Like, that was our pager code and everything was 136. You feel me? And so we got the shirts crossed out. But we all wearing them, like 16 of us. All with the blue shirts, with the blue uh, suede nights, you know, with the geared up on them. So the police start seeing us wearing these shirts. They calling us the romp room. That's mm. the romp room gang. Romp room. Motherfucker, don't y'all see it's crossed out? You feel me? Like, <laughs> right. <laughs> they like, that's the romp room, gang. romp room gang. So the police start calling us the romp room gang. So we like, fuck it. Nigga, we the romp room gang. Nigga, you know? Like, right in stuff. We not a gang. We gonna be the crew. It's the romp room crew. You feel me? And so that's when that's when, when Dre ended up going to Faust. That's when he made that song. When he say, hit Leonard, what will be seen? 20 young niggas get full of the heme. It's the romper room. And that solidified it right there once he said it. The right, song. right. But that's dope how you flipped it, though. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Start coming with the romper lations and everything. Yeah, yeah. That's how we ended up coming up with it. That's how it came about. Yeah, yeah. Okay. Uh... So my next question is this, man. You appeared on uh, a lot of classic songs, a lot of classic albums. You even featured on a lot of like documentaries. You was on American Gangster. Uh, you appeared in Ghost Ride the Whip, um, and a couple other ones that I'm trying to remember. You had a lot of um, interactions with a lot of different artists and recorded a lot. What was some of your your greatest uh, memories as far as studio sessions or just even appearing on a documentary? Can you talk about that a little bit? Yeah, yeah. One of my one of my greatest for the documentary is actually when they was doing American Gangster because I just had you know, right. did the movie, and so I had just did a song. This is how crazy the universe works. So I just had did a song called American Gangster. I was like, I'm an American, and you can actually go look it up. It's gonna say 2008, and we American Gangster came out like 2009, 2010, or episode. You feel me? And so I had mm -hmm. to say, I'm an American gangster. That's what they call me. Knew my description and you ain't never saw me. You know, and, and all of a sudden I get a call. I'm on a boat. Me, my son, mom, my son, and we on a boat, right? In the water. I get a call. Boom. It's Stretch from Seaside. He say, hey, man. He say, they want to do American Gangster with y'all. I'm like, the TV show? Like, you know what I mean? He's like, yeah, they want to do it. Right. I say, hell no. They don't. He said, like, yeah. He's like, Glad when I come out here and meet with y'all. So we went to go have a meeting with him. I went out to American Canyon and met me, Kilo, my homie Big Dunt, J Diggs. We went and met with him. But we almost wasn't finna do the show because everybody was saying how they wanted it to be. I said, well, we're not going to do no American Gangster. And if you go look on the article, DJ Vlad actually write that in the article. Like, Coolio the Underdog was about to shut down the film in American Gangster. <laughs> like, you know? So I like, do, man. If it's not the true story, we're not making up shit. We're not saying no fake bullshit. Right. Really like, nigga, we doing it the right way or no way. Like, exactly. not doing no extra shit. You feel me? And so everybody had a meeting and we did it. And so that was so huge to me because I got calls from so many people in the industry. Like, I ain't heard from these people. None in my career. 
All of a sudden, mm. everybody, oh, man, you an American gangster. Oh, man, even family members. Motherfuckers from Florida. I ain't seen her from 10 years. You feel me? Mm. It shows you that that what a little bit of fame, more, no, you know, notability gets you. You know, yeah, even know. artists, music artists, I ain't going to say all their names, but they was even called like, nigga, y'all turning into groupies now. You feel me? Like, y'all ain't never called me mm. for no features. Y'all ain't never called me to get on no verses or no shows or nothing. Now I'm on TV on this fucking American Gangster. Y'all calling me. Y'all want to oh, hang. Wow. Fuck y'all the same. That's the, see, that's why I'm, I'm me. See, I don't, I don't <laughs> care how much money or fame you got. Fuck you. You feel me? If you wasn't fucking with me when I was trying to fuck with you, fuck you. I'm not a dick rider. I don't coattail niggas. None of that shit. I don't give a fuck if you get a billion dollars today. And I know who you is. If you're not fucking with me, it's still fuck you. If you're on some sucker shit, it's right. still fuck you. If you're on some snitch shit, it's still fuck you. You feel me? It's no money or fame going to change me of who I am and how I think of you. I fuck with people for who they are. I don't care if you're a homeless person or if you're a rich person. It's your mentality and who you are as a person. But I fuck with you. You know? That's why a lot of rich niggas is bum niggas. You, they like they try to call niggas who broke and, and bum bums, but y'all the bum niggas, you fake perpetrating ass bitch niggas. You feel me? That's why they don't want me right. in the industry the way I should be, cause that's how I talk to them. You know, but I joke, I smile, I laugh, and I do all the shit. I have fun, but I let them try me. I pull that pistol and put it right in their fucking mouth, nigga. You feel all we can knuckle up. They know me though, niggas that know me know it. I'll be joking and laughing while I'm putting the fuck. Nigga, I'll blow your fucking head off. Say something else. This is the real me. Not friend, not joining for sales or views or nothing. If you ain't living your life to the fullest every day you, and for yourself, only in debt because I owe myself. If you ain't living your life for yourself every day and for the people you love and your family, you full of shit. If you're doing shit for views and likes and kissing ass to get some dollars, you full of shit. The clown, it's perpetrator. The circus. Indeed. We're not putting on okay, this. Uh, I got one more, one more question for you. Okay, um, I got two, two questions left. Let me see. T tell us about your latest project, um, Unknown Legend, the DVD, and the soundtrack. So it's like a double project. Um, what was the inspiration for doing that? And you know, tell us where can we get it? And where can we? I've been working on that since the cold thing about it. I've been working on that since even before Mac Dre got killed. Before, before mm. my brother got killed, before, before, you know, I was going to put that out under City Hall Records. Like in 2004, 2005, I was going to put it out because all my fans, used, and we're talking about 16 years ago, 17 years ago. You feel me? All my fans used to hit me and call me a legend and be like, oh man, you're a legend. You know, I'm like, I ain't nobody don't know me. You feel me? Like, <laughs> yeah, you're a for sure. You feel me? Like, they don't know who I am. And so, me and my homie EB was in the studio. He like, yep, yeah, you're you're an unknown legend. <laughs> he said, you're an unknown legend. I say, oh, I'm running with that. You feel me? That's that's who I am. I'm an unknown legend. But people, they take it wrong. They think I'm calling myself a legend. You know, like, yeah, nigga, I'm a legend. No. You got to know the backstory of where everything came from. You feel me? Like I just told you, all the fans was like, oh, you're a legend, man. Oh, you. And one time, what, what really moved me is one of my fans, he was like, I got all your albums. He said, I just got your last album. He said, I know you went platinum on that. And it fucks me up because it's like, I'm nowhere near platinum on none of my projects. You feel me? The highest selling project we did is 132,000 copies. That's 10 times below platinum, you feel me? So it's like, damn, this is how they think of me. They think so highly of you that that's where they think you're at in your career. You know what I mean? And so all of them call oh, me yeah. legends. And so that's why my homie EB, he was like, well, he said, you are a legend. He said, you might be unknown to a lot of people. He said, but a lot of people do know you. And so I said, oh, well, I'm an unknown legend then, you know? <laughs> Fuck it. And so that's when I said I'm going to do this project and tell my story. So I've been working on that for three years prior to that. And now I've been working on it 14 years after that. So that's 17 years in the making. 
to imagine the footage I got now. Imagine the songs I got now. Because what I want to do is I'm walking everybody through every year of my career. And every song is going to match every year of my career. Songs that you haven't even heard. But I made the song in 2009. This song is from 2010. These songs is from 2011. These songs is from, two, they ain't even out yet. So when they come out, and when you see the documentary, and you hear the music, you capturing it as it happens. But it's new songs. And it's artists who even mad at me, who I made songs with six years ago. Like, man, when you gonna put that song out we did? When I put out the soundtrack, because it goes with the year that we was making the song. If you get what I'm saying. Definitely, definitely, man. That's, that's innovative, man. I definitely look forward to that. So when is the release date for it? We're trying to push it. for My birthday, October 1st. So we want to push it okay. right around the end of, the end of October.